Isaiah 6, starting at verse number 1. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the doors were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal which he had taken with tongues from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. And verse number eight says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, here I am. Send me. I'll go. The word of God for the people of God. I want to preach this morning. Don't miss seeing God. Do not miss seeing God. God, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, to be pure and holy, to be tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary just for you. Heavenly Father, your people this morning need to hear a word just from you. So speak this morning only as you can. God, thank you for your hand of protection. Thank you for the testimony of the saints, of how you brought them through and how you brought them over and how you've blessed them on this week. Now, God, send your word that it might meet us where we are and move us to where you'd have us be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do me a favor, encourage your neighbor, tell them don't miss seeing God. The first verse of this chapter is so powerful and packed. In the year King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord. In the year that Breonna Taylor was murdered, I saw the Lord. In the year that Ahmaud Aubrey was lynched, I saw also the Lord. In, in the year that George Lynch, uh, uh, George Floyd rather, was killed, I saw also the Lord. In the year that the coronavirus had me stuck in the house I saw also the Lord in the year that number 45 gassed protesters called them terrorists so that he could take a photo op in front of a church that he'd never been to 
And by the way, he held the Bible a book with a book that he's probably never read. I saw also the Lord. Uh, in the year that my mama got sick, I saw the Lord. Uh, in the year that they said it was cancer, I saw also the Lord. In, in the year that I lost my job, I saw also the Lord. In the year where the divorce was final, I saw also the Lord. In, in, in the year that I was living the upside down, I saw also the Lord. Over the past couple of weeks, we have witnessed a complete shift in this nation. Between COVID-19 and, and the protests, the, the righteous protests, the murder of George Lloyd, uh, there's been a dramatic change in our world. So many things are no longer the same. Uh, our state government has changed. Our municipalities have, have changed. Um, our schools and institutions of higher learning uh, have changed. Our, our jobs and, and places of employment have changed. Our shopping uh, and our, 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 our grocery stores have, have changed. Even this quasi-insecurity has creeped itself into the life of the believers where, Tamika, you're not the only one that's struggling to see God even in this moment right here. This is not the first time that a cataclysmic event has changed things for our nation. Major changes will not only change the White House, but it will change your house. That major events will not only affect the Commonwealth, but it will affect your wealth. Uh, that major situations can not only affect the police, but it will affect the people in your house. But while everything, and I do mean everything has changed, our God remains the same. My encouragement to you this morning is simply this. Don't miss seeing God in this moment. And hear me clearly that God is with you even right now. In this moment, and I know it's crazy, and I know the news is nasty, and I know the economy may look bad, and I know that you have health issues and you have concerns, but don't miss God in this season. Can I, can I get a couple of y'all to type, don't miss God? I can't speak for you, but in this season, more than any other season of my life, I need a fresh encounter with God. Yeah. I mean the kind of encounter, the kind of the, the, the kind of experience with God that resurrects my worship, that that resuscitates my praise, that that renews my prayer life and restores my joy. I need a fresh encounter with God. And even though I can't get to church and even though I can't get to sanctuary, I still need to encounter God to make it through the craziness of this season. The kind of encounter that reminds you that ultimately God and God alone is still in control. Is there anybody in the feed that knows that when you encounter God, when you meet God, when you see God, it renews your strength. I wish I had a couple of people who could testify that, that, that I've had my back up against the wall, but then I saw God. Uh, uh, that I was sick and couldn't get well, and out of nowhere, I saw God. Uh, uh, is there anybody who was down to your last dime, but I saw God? I wish I had a couple of people that can admit I was lost and turned out. I was on my way to hell. I tried everything else. I tried everyone else. I drank everything else. I smoked everything else. But I saw God for myself. And seeing God made all the difference. 
We need the kind of worship experience with God that David had after he messed up with Bathsheba and he declared to God, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. That, 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 that being saved ought not rob you of your joy, ought not rob you of, of your peace, ought not re restore unto me the joy that is being saved. If you're experiencing spiritual depression and it seems as if God is distant, you might want to ask God, God, just restore unto me the joy of my salvation. In the text, we see this very picture. Isaiah is experiencing some up and down emotions because of the death of King Isaiah. Isaiah, whose name means Yahweh is my strength, was the king of Judah. Isaiah had reigned for 52 years as king. Then in his pride led to his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord God, and he entered the temple to burn incense on the altar of incense. When the high priest saw him doing this, he, he got a band of 80 priests together. They spoke truth to power, and they said, Isaiah, it's not right for you to burn incense to the Lord. That is for the job of the priests, the descendants of Aaron, who've been consecrated for this job. You're out of your lane. Then a mean an earthquake shook the ground and, 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 and rent was made in the temple. It, it tore the temple apart and, and bright light of sunshine shined through it and it shined on the king's face and immediately he was struck with leprosy. All because he got out of his lane and did something that was not his assignment nor what God had called him to do. There's a whole lesson in that. Uzziah was struck with leprosy, was driven from the temple, was driven out of the palace, and was forced to reside in a separate house. Mm -hmm. That's what the text describes it as. The government was turned over to his son, and that lasted the last 11 years of Isaiah's life. He lived in exile. Then he's died and he's buried in a field which belonged to the kings. Then chapter 6, verse 1 starts, In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord. That leads us to three brief conclusions. Number one, sometimes to see God clearly, somebody has to get out of your way. Now, I must admit for years, I had this thing wrong. I thought this was the first time that Isaiah saw God. I blame the relationship with Isaiah and, uh, and Isaiah from keeping or blocking Isaiah from seeing God for himself. I was wrong. Here's what God revealed to me. That when you read the first five books of Isaiah, Isaiah had visions from God. God was speaking to him. God was revealing himself to Isaiah. Uh, he showed Isaiah visions about the sins of Israel. He showed Isaiah visions about the mountain of God. He showed Isaiah the day of the Lord, the, the coming judgment, the, the return of Jesus Christ. He, he had shown Isaiah some visions. But when Isaiah, when Isaiah died, Isaiah saw God, but he saw him differently that he'd ever seen him before. Mm. He had a whole new glimpse 
of who God was. And you might not want to admit it, but going through traumatic situations changes how you see God. Isaiah may have been looking for God where God was, but now he is seeing God where God is. That the God that he knew before, he had a whole different view of him now in light of what he's been through. Isaiah was in the way, not of Isaiah seeing God, but of Isaiah seeing God now. For some of us here, uh, we need to get some stuff out of our way so we can see what God is doing. The president's tweets can get in your way. Drew Brees' comments can get in your way. Police brutality and murder and lynching can get in your way. CNN and Fox News can get in your way. Can I have seven of y'all type? Get out of my way. I need to see God. Even your relatives can get in the way. Isaiah was not just king. Isaiah was Isaiah's cousin. And problems with Isaiah's family was they were inconsistent, catch this, in their relationship with God. Isaiah talked about the goodness of God, but then he did ungodly things. Uh, Isaiah went to worship, but he wasn't worshiping God. He's worshiping his own self. Uh, Isaiah was the nation's physical leader, but he wanted to be the spiritual leader. Isaiah, Isaiah says, in the year that King Isaiah got out of the way, in the year that King Isaiah was out of the picture, in the year that King Isaiah was no longer there, I saw also the Lord. I wish I had time to deal with that also part because that suggests to us that not only did he see God, but he saw some other stuff too. But the other stuff wasn't worth mentioning because he saw God. All I'm trying to tell you is that in this season, you need to see God. But sometimes catch this, and this is the struggle for us. We will not see God in the problem. We will not see God in the protest. We will not see God in the virus because that's not where he is. He's above it. Check out verse one. In the year King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord. He was high and lifted up. And when you consider the goodness of God, you have to look up to see God. He's not at eye level. You got to look up to see God. He's not in the midst of, of all the confusion because he's not the author of confusion. You got to lift up your eyes to see God. The writer says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. The psalmist says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Then it reminds you, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but sometimes God ain't in your problem. God is above your problem. He's not in the confusion. He's above your confusion. He's not in your daily drama. He's above your daily drama. Lift up your head. God can help you through it, but not while your head is down. Lift up your head. God will get you through it, but not while your focus. Lift up your head. God will get you out of it, but not while you're walking around with your head down like you're defeated. Lift up your head. One of my favorite, 
one of my favorite uh, 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 videos on the internet, there was a young uh, uh, young man who had, who was playing a basketball game, and and he he had missed a crucial shot, and, and the coach time called time out. And that was as they were walking back to the huddle, his teammate saw him with his head down because he had missed this shot. And the teammate came over to him and grabbed him up under his neck and lifted up his head. Said, no, nah, we're going we to lift our heads on today. If I could grab each one of you, I'd lift up your head. And this is my place to shout. God reminds us that it is in him that we, that we move, we live, and we have our being. It seems to suggest to us that as we deal with trials, with viruses, with lynchings, and with drama, that God is right there above your problem. Lift up your head and give God praise. Not only, not only to see God does some people get out of the way, but when you see God catch this, you see your shortcomings. I know y'all ain't going to shout off of that, but you see your shortcomings. The first thing Isaiah sees is the true essence of God, his righteousness, his purity. His holiness. He beholds the glory of God and how God is different than he'd seen him before. Isaiah responds in conviction because he realizes when he lines himself up against God, God is perfect and he's flawed. Whew. Isaiah sensed his own condition, and when he saw God, he instantly realized that he had some problems in his own heart. He said, woe is me, because I am undone, and I live in the amongst of a people who are undone. Uh-huh. And I know, I know, you don't want nobody on the feed to know this. But the real truth is all of us have some sin in us. Sin can destroy your family relationships. Sin can wreck your sleep at night. Sin can cause you to shut your phone off. Sin will make you look behind you when ain't nobody following you. Sin will drop you to your knees. And I know, I know. Folk don't shout when you talk about sin. But if we be honest with ourselves, some of us was loving the sin. Yeah. We got dressed up to sin. We put on our best fine sin clothes. Got our hair cut and our nails done to sin. Put sin on our schedule, we planned sin. We we plotted sin. We looked for sin. We we drove all over town until we found sin. We spent good money on on sin. We got tired of sin here and went to other cities so we could sin. We danced with sin. We shacked up with sin. We drank sin. We smoked sin. We fell in love with sin. And just to be clear, all of our sin does not predate our salvation. That even after we got saved, we still sin. Mm. This is what Paul was talking about in Romans 7 when he says, When I would do good, evil is always present. And the good that I would do, I don't do. And the evil that I don't want to do, that's what I do. Prophet Isaiah recognized I've been sinning. And everyone around me has been sinning. 
And the marvelous thing about God is God does not just point out your sin, but God provides a method of cleansing your sin. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. This is the process of sanctification. I wish I, I, wish I had a couple of saints uh, that could thank God for sanctification. I, 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 know, I know we think sanctified is only for the Holy Church, uh, uh, but, but here it is, uh, the, 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 the angel of the Lord, the seraphim, uh, grabs a hot coal from off of the altar and puts it on Isaiah's lips and says, behold, your sin is taken away. And now for him, it was a hot coal. But for me and you, it was the blood of Jesus. Uh, the hymnologist says there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and, and sinners plunge beneath the flood and they lose all of their guilty stain. Grandmama said it this way, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount. I know nothing. I need five of y'all to just thank God right there for the blood of Jesus. Sometimes folk got to get out of the way for you to see God. Seeing God makes you realize how flawed you are. But here's point number three. Seeing God shows you how you ought to serve God. As Isaiah gets his heart right with God, notice, no, notice this happens after he gets right with God. This happens after he sees God. This happens after his sins are cleansed. After those two things happen, he enters the ministry for God. God changes Isaiah's, Isaiah's heart. He was already serving. He was already serving in the church, but now God has given him a ministry. He, he, was, already, he was already doing stuff around the church, but now God has turned it into a ministry. Whew. Because when God changes Isaiah's heart, he experiences an attitude adjustment. And God asks a question, who shall go for us and whom shall we send? Now, the truth is, the truth is, God does not need anybody to go for him. The truth is, God does not need us, but yet God gives us an opportunity to serve him through ministry. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to say it again. God is all powerful and so powerful that he does not need us, but yet for our benefit, he gives us an opportunity to serve him. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning. But somebody on the feed, you need to thank God for the opportunity that God has for you to serve him. Yesterday, while I was, while I was at the church passing out communion, uh, there was, a, there was a, a, a lull in the people showing up. I turned on Facebook as I was sitting outside and there were, there were preachers lamenting the fact that normally this week we would be going to Hampton University for the minister's conference. And I remembered that 14 years ago, Priscilla Hill called me on the Friday of Hampton minister's conference and asked me or told me that the church had voted and elected me as the pastor of Turner Memorial. 14 years ago, on the Friday of the Hampton Ministers Conference. And I thought about the fact that I am not worthy to Pastor Turner Memorial. I'm not worthy to preach his word. 
but for 14 years, God has been blessing and God has been keeping me for 14 years. God has allowed me to serve him for 14 years. God has given me the opportunity to serve him as senior pastor. And I know there are those that think I serve you. <laughs> I'm serving him. There, there are those that think that they're my boss, but I, I'm serving him. There, there, there are those that think they can run me, but, 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 but he's the one that called me and gives me direction. And it's to him that I have to thank him for, for the opportunity to serve him. There's nothing as wonderful as an opportunity. You have no idea how many people are waiting on an opportunity. But you have to discern opportunity. Because every time you get an opportunity, it's first presented as opposition. That opportunity comes disguised as a problem. Whew. I wish I had some help. But behind every problem is an opportunity. Every miracle in the Bible started as a problem. Whew. But then God called somebody to speak to the problem. And the problem turned from a problem to a miracle. And I don't know if you catch what I'm trying to tell you, but the fact that, that Richard Hampton is pastoring a church for 14 years is nothing less than a miracle. It's not because of me, but it's because of God. I thank God that one day I saw God for myself. I saw him differently that I'd ever seen him before. I saw God for myself and God changed me. And he said, who will go to Turner? Who will go for us? And, and I said, here I am. Send me. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning. But even in the COVID virus, even with protests around the country, God is asking even this morning, who will go for us? Who shall we send? Who, who can I send uh, to be a blessing to other people? Who can I ask to be an encouragement to somebody else? Who can I send to minister to those that are stuck in the house? Who can I send to call somebody and encourage them with a phone call. Who can I send to write a, a notes or, or send out greeting cards to bless somebody else? Who can I send? And notice, because he's seen God for himself, he's seen God for himself, he doesn't make any excuses. God says, who can I send? And who'll go for us? And Isaiah, without hesitation, says, here I am, send me, I'll go. Stop coming up with excuses. Here I am, send me, I'll go. I know that you're older now, but here I am, send me, I'll go. I know you got financial constraints, but here I am, send me, I'll go. I know your family's dysfunctional, but here I am, send me, I'll go. I know I'm not qualified, but here I am. Send me. I'll go. Can I get 10 of y'all to type? Here I am. And because he served God. Because he answered the call. God not only blessed Isaiah, but God blessed us through Isaiah. What do I mean? Well, if you read Isaiah chapter 26, he says that he, God, will keep us 
in perfect peace if our mind is stayed on him. This is the same Isaiah who in chapter 54 says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment, you shall condemn. That this is the heritage of, y'all ain't talking to me. Yeah. That this is the same Isaiah who in chapter 40 says, Has, have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, uh, neither faints nor is weary. Yeah. That his understanding is unsearchable. Come on, Johnson. I know you're watching. Help me out. He gives power to the weak. And to those that have no might, he increases their strength. Even the youth shall utterly faint, shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. That same Isaiah turned around and, and got to preach about the coming of the Christ child. That same Isaiah, uh, when he committed his ways to God, if we can summarize it all in just one thing, he said this, ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. Type yeah with eight H's. Yeah. God. is right there. And don't you allow nobody to keep you from seeing God in this moment. Make it hard, but I need to see God. If I got to move, I need to see God. If I got to move some stuff, or some people out of my way. I need to see God. 